Well, here's the table I've been working on. That's the table I told you guys in the previous video that's going to go here. I'm going to move all this junk here. And I'm going to put some of the tools in the shelf that I'm making at the bottom underneath. So I'm not a carpenter, but I made it as to what I thought would be the best for me. It's all framed. I got this free timber from a lumber yard that was throwing it away. It's BC fur actually, so that was pretty good. There's four posts like that. I bought these big caster wheels with bearings in them. There's four of them with brakes, so I can move the table any direction that I want. And they're bolted on with lag bolts underneath. So it's pretty well all framed now. And this friend of mine that built me my wood shed that you saw in a previous video a month ago or two, he cut some BC fur up for me that I got from the lumber yard. These were like in beams. So that saved me a lot of money for sure. I was sure happy to get those. And I have a lot of lumber left that I use for the legs here. And I'm going to use those for my legs for the countertops that I'm building on that side in spring. So there's all the BC fur here cut up in about three inch thick pieces and that's what the top of my table is going to be that's going to be nice and solid that's what you want when you're working on molders because you don't want the top of your table to be rubbery or bounce and once I've got that wood on there screwed down I'm going to get a piece of sheet metal that's fairly thick and coat the whole top of the table so I've got these long five inch screws here that are going to go through the wood and right into the two by fours like that Underneath there, I'm going to brace that as well and put a piece of plywood there for a nice long shelf. Now what I'm going to do here is pre-drill the holes where I'm putting the screws because I've noticed the wood may crack. So you just drill a smaller hole than your screw and then when you put the screw in, it's not going to crack the wood. Now in some spots the lumber is not quite even, there was a crack so I put some glue and I've got these clamps holding the lumber together and when it's dry I'm going to release the clamps and keep adding the wood here. I'm also putting glue in between the pieces. whole top's on now all I have to do is trim that side there with a chainsaw but all the rest is on there good that's my line for cutting with a chainsaw So I've got all the ends trimmed here and work pretty good with that little Poulin chainsaw. Next I'm going to put this quarter inch plywood on top to make it nice and smooth. To nail down the plywood I'm going to use my air stapler here. So I've got the plywood on top, it's nice and smooth now. i got the bottom braced, I need to get a piece of wood to put on the bottom. But right now I'm waiting for Brendan from getbentmetal.com. He's delivering me a nice piece of sheet metal to put on top. So there he is with the piece of sheet metal. He's even delivering it for me. So here's Brendan again from getbentmetal.com. He's got a YouTube channel too. He's the guy you saw in the previous video where he welded a snowblower pulley. Now he just brought the sheet over and how thick is that? It looks pretty thick, man. This is, uh, this is 16 gauge uh, hot rolled steel. So it's almost a 16th of an inch and uh, it's mild steel. So this is a, a 4x8 sheet uh, and it comes from the, the steel mill like this or a steel uh, retailer. Now my table is 40 inches wide, your sheet's 4 feet wide. Now what I'm wondering is how am I going to bend this so it doesn't look all butchered? Uh, well we could, we could take this to somebody who had uh, a break, uh, an 8 foot break, and we could break this in their, uh, in their shop. I don't have one unfortunately, I only have a 4 foot break. Uh, the poor man's solution uh, what I've done in the past is uh, you know, we'll take a grinder with a cutoff wheel or a zip wheel. It's a thin uh, cutting wheel. And uh, we'll make uh, basically a score line 
down the length of the sheet. So usually I, I like to use a guide when we do this. So we clamp this angle iron uh, down the line and we take the cutoff wheel and we basically follow that score line all the way down the sheet. And we don't want to cut through 100%. We like to cut through about halfway. Uh, and once we've cut through halfway, uh, we undo the clamps and take the angle iron off and we should be able to, almost with our hands or with a, with a hammer, uh, just turn the steel and bend it. Is it kind of like when you install drywall sometimes? Uh, you it, score it? Exactly okay. like installing drywall, exactly. All right, so I guess uh, in this case I would score it underneath, right? Uh, I, I always try and hide, you... this, hide the score line. So whatever side is going down is the side I would score. Okay. All right, well, thanks a lot, man. I appreciate it. No problem, my pleasure. And uh, if you guys have questions on welding, check out his channel. You can ask him questions too. So I got one side of the sheet bent. That's quite a job. I could have done better on this side, but I didn't score deep enough, so it was a bit harder. What I should have done too is made the table shorter than 8 feet, so I could have bent some of the metal at the ends. Sometimes you don't realize what you should have done until it's all done. And at this point, I can't take it apart. But it's going to do like that anyways. Now I got the metal top off again and I've decided to glue it to the top of the table because I've got a nice flat surface of plywood and I'm going to spread it on the table and then flatten it out and then put the metal on top and put some weight on and let it dry overnight. Now I'm going to flatten all the glue like this because I don't want any air pockets. So I've got the whole tube on there and I flatten it with a scraper as I showed you. I'm wearing gloves because that stuff really sticks to your hands and it can take days to wash off. So now I'm just going to get the metal top put on and put some weight on there and let it dry. So I've got the top all glued. Unfortunately, I had to use a bit of nails to keep the bubbles down. That's too bad. That's probably because I didn't bend it right on the ends here. And when I nailed it to the side of the table, it made the inside here spring up. But I've got them all down now. And for what I do on this table, that's fine. Because basically, I'm just going to be working on motors and stuff. So it doesn't really matter if it's a not totally a hundred percent but I'm glad with the way it's turning out so at this stage I got the bottom shelf put on everything else is done the top is secured and I bought some paint here this is porch and floor paint it's latex and I'm gonna paint the wood on the table it's gonna make a nice finish for the shop I didn't want it white because it shows the dirt too much and the gray's perfect it's not too bright and not too dark So here's my table with one coat of paint. I'm going to keep the wood stove going all night to make sure it dries pretty good. That stove here works pretty good actually. I burned some hardwood in there and my garage is fully insulated and the heat will stay in here for quite a while. And tomorrow I'll get the second coat put on and then after that I'll be ready to transfer all the stuff to that table and make more room over there. So here's the table with the second coat of paint on and it looks much better now. So here's the table all painted and in its right place. So I'm glad about that finally. I stored all my wood tools on the shelf underneath. So when I need them I'll just pull them out. And I especially like the metal top here that I got from getbentmetal.com. He's a guy with a local shop here in town. Anyways, it's just an idea in case you want to make a table for your own shop. Thanks for watching this video and I'll see you next time.